Okay, today we have a treat. We have here an HP 35 calculator. The HP 35 calculator is famous for being the first um, scientific calculator, um, which is a pocket calculator. There are, of course, desktop scientific calculators. Uh, but in 1972, HP release, uh, releases the HP 35 calculator. Um, this is not the original model, uh, but it's also not the later models, which have um, keys like this in all the places instead of the blank keys here. Um, uh, so this is released in 1972. Um, here is a K&E Decelon slide roll, late model, uh, something you could also have bought in 1972. Um, so a late model, high-end slide roll, uh, plastic construction, unlike the earlier wooden slide rolls. Um, okay, just want to do a little comparison for fun of, uh, for the fun of it. Um, let's have a look at the HP 35. Uh, if you want a closer look at the Decelon slide roll, I have a video called the Versalog versus Decelon uh, slide rolls uh, for a closer look at the slide roll. Now let's turn on the HP here. Um, now, before 1972, there are pocket calculators out there um, that can compute uh, the four basic functions, addi uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, some of them can do square roots, I think. Um, Texas Instruments is a player. Um, there are others. But the HP 35 is really the first uh, pocket scientific calculator. Um, the advancement is... Uh, an algorithm called Cordic is used to implement the uh, trigonometric and logarithmic functions, and that's really what makes it possible um, to do with such a limited um, computing power, which is inside the uh, the integrated circuits on this thing. Um, okay, it's battery powered. Um, there is a battery pack in here. Um, you get about three hours of battery life. Um, it's rechargeable. There's a little key on how to use it on the back. Um, if you're not used to uh, the old HP calculators, you'll notice some interesting things, like it doesn't have parentheses, um, and it's famous for this. It's famous for uh, requiring RPN-style entry. I'm not going to explain RPN-style entry uh, in this video, but uh, maybe a future video. Uh, but the early HP calculators are known for this, whereas the TI scientific calculators, when they come out um, a year or two later, um, implement something called algebraic entry, which is a little bit easier to use, uh, a little bit more comfortable for people. Um, and then there's kind of the, the original scientific calculator war of the 1970s. Um, but the HP 35 is called the HP 35 because it has 35 keys. Um, I like that it has this uh, dedicated pi key. Um, I do like the RPN entry. Um, also notice there's no second button. Um, every button has one function. The HP 45, which comes out the next year, um, introduces uh, the second key um, and gives some buttons an extra function. Uh, but the HP 35, it really stands up to the test of time. Um, it's still fully functional, uh, works well. You can see my example here is a bit worn. Um, let's just do a little comparison here. Uh, so if you want to, you're, de uh, you're deciding in 1972 uh, whether you should buy an HP 35 or a Decelon slide roll. Uh, first, you're going to look at the price. Uh, the Decelon in today's dollars is going to set you back about $200, uh, whereas the HP 35, $2,400, more than 10 times as much. And the, and the Decelon is not a cheap slide roll. Uh, there are ones you could get a little, little cheaper um, that can still uh, compute the transcendental functions. Um, an advantage the slide roll might have is that there is no battery to replace, um, no electricity required, never have to worry about that. The battery on the HP 35, like we said, will last you three hours, maybe a little bit more. Um, you could carry a spare battery. If you're at your desk at work, you can uh, plug in the AC adapter and charge your battery while you work with it. Um, okay, so in terms of what is the main advantage of the calculator? Well, precision. Uh, so the HP 35 will show you 10 significant figures. Uh, let's see. 10. Uh, let me square this number. Um, and you'll see what it does is it now shows scientific notation, uh, but it's still going to show you 10 significant figures. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and times 10 to the 18 is what that means. Um, this standard is still used on, on modern calculators uh, when they overflow. Um, okay, let's clear that. 
Uh, what else can we say? Uh, both can compute the transcendental functions. The HP35 is the first pocket calculator to do that. Um, you might also say the HP35 is fast, where the slide rule is slow. Now I know, especially slide rule fans are gonna gonna want to argue that point that the slide rule is fast, and for some calculations, definitely it is fast. Um, but especially for the precision that you can get on the calculator, um, the HP35 is fast, um, especially for its high precision. Uh, let's just do a couple of problems to see the, the different ways you would solve them, uh, slide rule versus calculator. Um, uh, we'll do problems that involve the transcendental functions. Uh, so this first problem here, um, okay, I have a triangle, so I'm going to do trigonometry. I'm going to need the transcendental functions on the decilon. Uh, the trigonometric functions are on the back. You can imagine that I'm trying to resolve x and y components of a vector here, or just find the lengths, um, this length and this length of this right triangle, uh, knowing the hypotenuse length, 86. So to solve this on a slide roll, you're going to find 86 on the main scale here, and you're going to move the end, which, which is called the index of the next scale, over that index. So the 86 here um, is here, and I move that end over. Then I'm going to use this scale called S. Now the S is obscured, but it's this scale here. And when I find that angle, 27.6 degrees, so there's 25 degrees, 26, 27, and 27.6 would be here. Once I do that, um, I read the result, uh, which is Y, uh, down here on the main scale, so 3.98. And famously, that's Y. Famously on the slide roll, uh, decimal point is not there, and you need to know that it's 39.8. Okay. Uh, you, we could say that's another advantage of the HP35. It's going to keep track of that decimal point for me. Uh, now, to find X, I don't need to reset the sliding part of the slide roll. I just need to go out to a different part of the S scale. Um, I need to find that angle 27.6, except using these red um, marked angles here, which read backwards. So here's angle 20 degrees in red. So 25... Uh, that's 26, 27, and I have to guess about where 0.6 is. Um, so tw uh, let's put it about there. Okay. Then I'll read result down here. It looks like 75, 76.2. And of course, this will be feet if the hypotenuse is in feet. Okay, let's look at what that's, how that solution works on the HP 35. And there's different ways you could key it in. Uh, let's key it in in the straightforward way. Well, I'm going to need to know that on the HP35X, um, you don't necessarily even need to know this on the slide roll, but X is 86 uh, times cosine of 27.6 degrees, and Y, 86 times the sine of 27.6 degrees. Let's see how that would get keyed in. Uh, so, you could put the 86 in first, but let's put in the 27.6 degrees. Now, the HP35 is always stuck in um, degree mode. It always assumes angle measures are degrees. The HP45 uh, can switch between degrees and radians, uh, but that's not available yet in 1972. Okay, so to get the cosine there, I simply press cosine. Then, a couple seconds later, it gives me the cosine. And then what I'll do is I'll punch in the 86, and then I'll tell it to multiply. And I get 76.2, and you can see I can read off up to 10 significant figures there, where all the, death, all the slide rule could give me was about 3. Um, okay, for, for y, uh, let's read 80. Oh, let, me, let me do y the other way. I'll put in the 86 first. If I do that, I have to press enter. That moves it up the stack. Uh, that's, that's a discussion for a separate video. Okay. Um, then I'll put in the 27.6, then I'll compute the sine. Now both those numbers are on the stack, to multiply them I press multiply, and then I get the 39.8, uh, and whatever else I want to read off of there. Um, at the time, this is what people are seeing as the advantage of the calculator. Um, fast and very precise. Especially if you key it in in such a way that you're not keying in the numbers, you're, you're using the, the HP35's operating stack to hold intermediate results. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, here I just want to compute this expression. 
uh, calculate this approximately. Um, let's do this one first on the calculator. Uh, so let's clear. Uh, so to compute this on the HP 35, you should start with the exponent. So let's compute 4.1, enter, 2.3, divide. That's the quotient of those two numbers. Now I'll compute the quotient of these two numbers. 72, enter, 37, divide. Okay, then to compute this expression, I press this x to the y. This is something a pocket four function calculator cannot do. So now I've computed that, and then I need to multiply by 37. So 37 times, and I get here 121.22, uh, let's just read that, 96. Okay, let's see how good we can do on the slide roll. Okay, on the slide roll, uh, I'm not going to be able to do this uh, without some transferring of the numbers. So first let me compute 72 over 37. Uh, so to do that, you see here I, I'll find 72 on this main scale, then I'll pull over the 37. When I do that, I'm going to make sure they're aligned really well. When I do that, I should read the result here on the main scale. That 9, that's 1.9. So let's look at that closely. It looks like 1.94, uh, maybe 6, 1.946. Let's just remember that. So I need 1.946 to that power. So to do that, I find the 1.946 on these scales at the bottom. So here's 1.94, and let's find 6 about there. Uh, so I've set that 1.946 here on this log log scale at the bottom. Okay, then to compute the 4.1 over 2.3 power, I'm going to bring the 2.3 uh, to the hairline. Oh, that's 2.2. Ooh, when I do that, 2.3, I have this common slide roll problem that I'm going to be off scale with the 4.1. So to correct for that, I'm going to use the CF scale here. You need to know how to use your slide roll to do this. Um, okay, so instead of finding the 2.3 there in the usual place, I'm going to find the 2.3 up here. Okay. Then I'm going to bring the hairline to the 4.1. Then the result there is going to be read down on this bottom scale, the ln 3. Uh, okay, it looks like 3.1 to 3.28. So 3.28 is about the approximation that I have for this. 3.28. Okay, so let's find that on the main scale. 3.1, 3.2, on the main scale. Then the last thing I need to do is multiply by 37. So I'm going to use the CI scale, which is red, and find the 37 on there. You can see that you really need to know how to use the slide roll to do this. Uh, so there's the 37. And the result is going to read on the main scale under this. And looks like 1, 2, after that mark is 1. So it looks like 1, 2, 1, 2. Uh, so I get 1, 2, 1, 2. Um, and I'll put decimal point there. And this is our slide roll solution. Um, Looks like we get a fourth significant figure, which sometimes happens, especially when you're um, on the left end of the slide roll scale. And there's a reason for that, but I'm not going to go into that in this video. Um, okay, so I hope you enjoyed this little comparison of the HP 35, uh, first scientific pocket calculator, and this Decelon slide roll, both of which are available in 1972. Uh, let me know in the comments which one you would have picked. Take care.